Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saigon and today we're continuing our beloved Choose to Lose campaign where we're trying to beat the game on Legendary Armament and Difficulty with less uh, soldier classes, uh, the banning of the most uh, overpowered items, less hit points and of course stronger enemies, a better advent and a better Chosen are installed. I still need to find a good intro uh, to get everything concisively into one sentence. Anyways, today it's Operation Dawn Father, which is finally a guerrilla ops. We had a couple of uh, dark VIP missions and the reason why I'm choosing this one here is I want to counter the construction of a new alien facility. We've um, adamantly uh, fought back on the whole um, doom uh, timer and so far we haven't even dipped into the doom timer nor did we need to do the black side mission i want to continue with that we've uh, brought parts of the prime team quick feed Wurtz and primus are with uh, primus are with us but sandman makes uh, his return still wearing only one sleeve for whatever it's worth and we got make the public bravo and zoo Huger with us so a couple of other uh, soldiers are coming with us from the B team so let's just directly jump into the mission and get going as always we're using a lot of the alien rulers swag the alien rulers weapons and hopefully I will get a couple more toys soon oh wait a second wait 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 we got the losses here wait a second I'm not going without the lure. Where is the lure? There we go. Ultrasonic lure. Kishing. That's a good one. I want to. Uh, I want to use uh, that item. More shredding. Yeah, the rest is fine, I suppose. But the. You guys wanted to see the lure in action, and this time I am going to deliver. Here we go. Finally. Okay, we landed <clears throat> and we are landing on high ground, which is fantastic. One thing that is not so fantastic is that we're, of course, that we're, of course, without concealment. You can already see that something is standing near the wagon, elsewise, elsewise we would not... Uh, we would not have seen the option to actually take a shot at it. So something must be near. Oh, and we got our hyper scout. Why did I not think about that? So where is the stairs? Oh, that's right there. Blocking the stairs. Plenty of loss. Okay, cool. Good. You know what? I think for shits and giggles, we're going to blow that up. Positioning ourselves over here. It's not going to be enough to kill it. We're actually not killing it this turn, but we will next turn. If there is still someone around. Maybe the pack is essentially like moving around here. No, it's still there. Okay, let's have a little combo here. That explosion should trigger even more loss. And time for Wurz's kill zone.
Oh wow, okay, kill zone still going. By the way, technical analysis is also going. So far, I didn't have to use the lure. Target neutralized. We're doing quite well without it. I'm wondering if <clears throat> the kill zone is still going after you've moved. I go where I am needed. The time for hiding is over. Well, are we only dealing with loss? Well, in that case, the ultrasonic lure would be kind of pointless. It feels good to move around. Affirmative. Moving out. All right, and we do have the very worst weapon to deal with loss with the bolt caster. Like if there ever had been a worst weapon, it would be the bolt caster. Okay, no. Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> what? You cannot run. They spotted me out randomly. Me open. All right. And the bolt caster. Well, at least you showed him really well. 10 points of damage for lost. On the move. Okay, let's take a good look here. Down. Oh, we got him placeable. Shouldn't waste that one. Moving even further. And now it's time for a nice little cleanup here. Almost. That was pretty good, Wurtz. Okay, we can... We can still uh, kill these guys. Let's give our Reaper a couple of kills here. No compromises. You must keep me reasonable. One of many. I require ammunition. Okay, we gotta reload, and I think that's a fair request. We don't have an auto loader, right? No, we gotta hear trigger. Let's stay there for a second. In the meantime, in the meantime, let's move up. <laughs> Primus can still nicely clean up the rest. Let's try to hit one of these guys. Alright, it was a pretty far shot. I was about to brag just how well Michael Bra uh, Public Bravo is hitting. Because we've given him the superior... Uh, off screen I've given him the superior perception. And he also has to shadow up um, the... The... Um, shadow fall. Which is off uh, the unique offhand, <clears throat> both of which he's, I think, now at 120 aim. Not too shabby, if you ask me. Okay, we only have losts, which, to be entirely honest, 
there's no ultrasonic lure that we can put onto someone let's just for the sake of using the item try it I should have not immediately used it I forgot that it is spawning a lost swarm Psyche and that was stupid Well, at least they do have tactical analysis and I, of course, wanted to showcase uh, that tactical analysis is the shit because now they can't reach us. Or run into Bladestorm. Well, hello there. Good. Um, quick feed starts. Kill With a couple of obvious kills here. Target disabled. <clears throat> Getting all of the dashers first. By thinking about it, this position is actually pretty good for a blade storm, for blade storm ranger, because whoever wants to come needs to pass by us, and we'll get hit. And of course, whilst killing these guys is fun and uh, worth a little bit of experience, there is actually bigger fish to fry, such as finishing the mission. And keep in mind, there is always the 95% shot that you're missing, just like that one. Alright, grappling forward. Good job, Mike. X ray down. Back in business. Alright, Primos. Let's position ourselves right into the in the middle of uh, the fray. And we're getting the dashers. Okay, I think we ran out of free reloads. So overdrive in order to get that extra action. Apparently we have not yet uh, run out of free reloads. Okay, fantastic. Whoa. He's still going. And as per normal, we're going to pull more. No, potentially won't change anything. All right. 
We're moving over. Wards could use a kill zone if it would be off of cooldown. And we're still okay from a timing perspective. Sandman is getting closer. I'm I'm wondering just if there are any other enemies other than Lost. Potentially not. Which is okay. There is nothing wrong with the good old zombie mission. But I wanted to showcase the lure so bad that I accidentally used it too early. Basically all of the targets within the zone of its explosion will be marked and the loss will prioritize these targets and just charge in in order to get them. Moving further. There is nowhere to hide. Double time. Well, I think everybody can start to double time. We'll just overwatch and kill that guy. I am ever vigilant. Words can help uh, with that. And Michael Public Bravo takes this position. So yeah, it seems we're really only fighting against the loss. The negative part about the loss is they only are worth a third of an experience point. So in terms of in terms of actual experience, it's not even that great. If you think about if you normally kill something, it'll be it'll be uh, the one experience point from the kill, plus all of uh, the assist experience. And the assist experience is quite significant. One should not underestimate that. Location confirmed. One third for the specialist, one fourth for the ranger, and one fifth for the grenadier. And um, and um, the sniper. And I think all of the hero classes get one fourth as well. So on an average team of six soldiers, depending on your composition, you often end up with two two point three two point five experience per kill which is plenty compared to a third um, and no assist experience from the loss on the other hand the loss are just that mindless brute that is charging in So you can't really expect them to give a lot of experience on top, right? Observe how it's done. An efficient kill. Good. This here triggers another pack, and that's totally fine. Got to speed things up a bit. There is a another boomer, which might trigger. Fantastic. Well, this guy is going to explode. Good. 
we gotta get in there next turn. Alternatively, we're just blowing it, uh, blowing it to smithereens. Alright, Wurz moves up. Moving to Overwatch. And Mike Please. just simply moves and moves and moves. Good, the rest of the swarm moves in. Interesting to see that there was a single loss with seven hit points. And there's the blade storm. Fantastic. Some extra damage. All right, quick feet. I'm low key hoping that quick feet will get a promotion after this one. Therein lies the problem, we're running out of ammunition. Oh, fantastic, we got a promotion on the Spark. That is indeed pretty good. Okay, so next up. Let's see what we can hack. Yeah, well, they could, uh, I could try to hack that for an extra group of reinforcements, but I don't want to play. I don't want to play that episode this seriously. I don't need to farm. going to hack it in a second Give me a minute. Oh, yeah. okay soon a swarm appears I don't know where they are coming from so might as well just overwatch Watching comes naturally. <clears throat> Good. Time to hack. Let's get a couple of alien alloys on top. Because why not? Could have even gotten a large cache. Good. Okay, so... Moving up. And this should potentially finish the mission. Yeah, I figured. Okay, well, I still could not showcase the lure. There will be a mission, I can promise you that. There will be a mission where I can showcase it. I will seek out lost missions. And we are back. So, let's Troops take a good look. look Primus is finally promoted. I would so much love to take Repair, because it's a fantastic skill for those of you who haven't seen the Rise of the Robots campaign. Uh, essentially, you can cross Repair sparks so if you do have two sparks and it is uh, starting to become really really good instead we're going to take bombard which is more or less a capacitator discharger 
kind of an AOE damage. And um, I am going to make it work, hopefully. Got a lot of corpses, some alien alloys in the stock. Considering the limited resources available to you, and we countered you a, um, a fantastic uh, dark event. Work. Soldier bond available, the highest one in the training center. That would be awesome, level three bonds on our prime team. That would be fantastic. All right, on the flip side, it means that they will be out of commission for now. Okay, so I think we finished, yeah, we finished uh, building the tower here. And I was about to, I was about to finish the facility lead and then we wanted to expand. The reduction of uh, contact costs is cool, but we do have enough intel. We don't need more at this point. So let's get that facility lead, which will eventually also allow us to expand how we want, because we would have another way of stopping the doom timer. And there we do have some extra power 12 more days and i think the next idea was to build a facility let's in the meantime start clearing out more debris and with the power we also can and potentially should upgrade the additional communications uh, stations that will also allow us to shift one engineer for the time being. And given that we do have so much energy, we can free up another engineer. It's all about being just a tiny bit more efficient. If we upgrade this... Well, I don't want to spend delirium, that's, that's a given. good but our power looks fine and we have plenty of freed up engineers now so excavation can start to fully work which is good we got that resistance communication upgraded and i am free to like pour um, resources into either resistance communication or the power relays if we need more of either of those good Efficiency in base design. Good, that's the last upgrade. We do not need more intel at this point, but I would like to continue with the plasma rifle. I will send word as soon as we have something of note. I would like to continue with the plasma rifle. This idle staffing here, theoretically, I could switch it around because no one's in the infirmary. I will. Um, accept that level of slacking because it is inevitable, inevitable that at some point people will get injured again and you want to have that best possible treatment when that occurs got a facility lead which is fantastic and next up we wanted to go to western europe because when we're building a lab now we wanted to operate at Commander, best potential capacity we can't establish any new contacts until we upgrade our systems. It's cool, Shen, don't worry. Attempting to establish local Ooh. regional contacts. Ooh, we got the AP rounds, finally. That's what I was waiting for. I think we wanted to go battlefield medicine next. <clears throat> but I've spent these supplies. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. We will need to get it eventually, but I still don't have a dedicated healer yet. So I think we're okay on ammunition. Could use one more grenade, though. Sounds good, Commander. I'll let you I will wait with the experimental heavy weapons, <clears throat> as there are upgraded heavier versions of them which we are going to take once the armor is actually upgraded.
good. That was... That was predictable. So just gotta keep in mind the weaknesses are gone. <clears throat> and that is bad. Aliens try to snuff out XCOM through brute force, adding more enemies to every mission for ever. So let's take a look at our dark events. We got a fair share of really piss poor dark events. So we got uh, basically stun lances moving in and out. We got Edwin Alloy padding for extra durability. The mate hole is not that bad, but we got a um, show of force on top of it. I'm, I'm not even sure that it shows all of the dark events. I know that this is a bugged uh, view. The game cannot cannot even maintain uh, the list of all dark events as you go into the end game, but uh, you can see them here. Show of force, Edwin and Lloyd padding, high alert uh, means we're automatically being spent uh, uh, being uh, starting without concealment and bending read is the move in and move out of the stun lancer so yeah quite a difficult setup on the flip side we finally got the promotion to colonel good so what are we going to do I think I want to go for the stronghold sooner than later. And is there a chance of an ambush? Yes, but with the skirmisher we could negate that. Do we really want to negate it? Hmm. Good question. 16 days if we put Jessica Jones in here it's 15 days but that also means we've essentially put our entire prime team onto onto a long lasting mission nah I don't think that that's a good idea let's take an uh, ranger and we're risking the ambush. That's okay. The promotion <clears throat> on top of it and we would get into her stronghold. I think that that is the wisest course of action. We get a nice promotion on top of it. You want to put a major into that slot because the type of mission will not change <clears throat> and the reward will not change. They will be reoccurring missions um, every single month. And having that promotion uh, from major uh, to Colonel will go a long way. My kind will do whatever is needed. At the same time, let's promote our beloved um, protagonist here, Reckoner. Manual override, fantastic ability. Battlelord, not bad either. Most of our new recruits are Judgment, typically the worst of the abilities, and I'm the war, we might have had uh, I'm wondering if we want to maybe take Judgment um, plus Reflex. And he has returned fire on top of it, which really makes shooting him a pretty bad prospect. They could get, uh, they could get feared. He will take a return fire, and he gets an, he gets an extra action next turn so i like that and each turn the first reflect uh, reflex shot against or reaction shot against you misses hell yeah we're going to take that so it's not a bad setup um i like lightning reflexes like i said i would have loved to see uh, him with extra um, mad packs which would have made the whole situation just a tiny bit better because he could have been our quote-unquote healer, but I am okay with uh, what he has to offer. Tactical rigging, lightning reflexes, return fire is actually not too bad on kind of the type of setup that we're running. And he could become the tank of, uh, this, uh, of this very run. Superior conditioning is good. Frodo 
Uh, someone does, did not have superior conditioning. I think it was Frodo, and now we can exchange the P the PCS is for free. Yeah, agility is good. Okay, good. Well, not bad. Not bad. And we got a supply rate. Savage, Intel suggests a high concentration of beast-like enemies on that mission. Well, that's going to happen next turn, I can tell you. Uh, next episode, I can tell you that much. But a supply rate is exactly what we could use. A couple of alien alloys, a couple of valerium, and definitely a bit of supplies. Which, in the grand uh, scheme of things, now that plasma rifles are around the corner, could be very, very helpful. With the upgrade, uh, with the potential upgrade of plasma rifles, we would have um, quite a boost in firepower. And hopefully, we sh we can get the mutant autopsy going soon-ish. Some of those, uh, some of those autopsies will automatically resolve once we do have plasma rifles and power armor, which is the whole reason why I'm doing it in the first place uh, to save some research Dr. time Jen's constant vigil over my activities is starting to wear thin okay cool anyways thank you for uh, taking a look today and be uh, being with me on that uh, mission i would like to invite you to leave a comment and a like down below and see you in two days take care guys bye bye